Dr. Issam Amido was born in Cairo, Egypt, and was raised with his brothers in a very small one-room apartment. Their apartment had no electricity and no running water. The bathroom was outside and shared with many neighboring families. He often tells his biography by saying things were pretty hard for he and his brothers, and that he has uh, a, a, had polio growing up, and how he never let that particular physical challenge cause him not to have dreams of becoming an excellent and outstanding world-class athlete. At the age of three, Isom developed a disease. His family could not afford a specialty doctor, so they took him to a local public hospital where the doctors informed them that Isom had developed polio, a disease that affects the nerves and can lead to paralysis. The medical staff told his family that Isom would never be able to walk again without a surgery that they could clearly not afford. Throughout his childhood and adolescent years, he became more and more determined and driven. He refused to be told he could not do whatever he set out to do. When I run labs, really, the coaches saw me just like, you know, like, I run different because I got pony in my left legs. And he started feeling sorry for me and he said, you know, like, how hey, you stay in the sight. So when I start, just like I told the coach, hey, don't treat me different. Just treat me like everybody. And I want to prove myself really to them. So when we go fight, the coach, just like I remember the coach, he used to tell me, hey, you put me in the side. So every time when I fight the guy, I just like, you know, I use my imagination. The guy I'm fight, he's a coach. He used to tell me, hey, sit in the side. And I, I beat him and I win. And after I win really, the coach, he came to me and said, you're excellent. Despite his disability, his fortitude to prove skeptics wrong was shown through his success in athletics. Isam Hamido was named to the Egyptian National Paralympic team at age 18. He was ranked number one in the world and won three gold medals. During the very next year, tragedy struck. Hamido was in a terrible car accident that resulted in five fatalities. Although Hamido's life was spared, his journey from that point on would be anything but easy. Hamido suffered so many severe injuries that he lost all his strength. Even the simplest tasks such as picking up an apple seemed impossible. Once again, this young man's life was filled with skeptics, but this time the list grew to include family and friends. A tragedy like this that would have caused most people to give up only empowered Hamido. For this young warrior who had already overcome so many obstacles, this was just another test. Hamido slowly rehabilitated himself using the same determination he used to overcome polio and his passion to be the best was refueled. In less than three years, Hamido was back on top and ranked number one in the world once again. Dr. Hamido attributes most of his success to the support of his coaches. The opportunities they offered him inspired him to provide the same type of support for future students and student athletes he decided to enroll at the College of Physical Education in Egypt to pursue his coaching and teaching aspirations. A fitness assessment was required for acceptance to this program. He performed remarkably well during the assessment. He even outperformed some of the able bodies, but they still rejected him upon discovering he had polio. Kendall Stevens, head coach of the U.S. Paralympic National Team, recognized Tomito's ability and outstanding performance in several athletic events, including the shot put, discus, javelin, seated volleyball, and swimming. He offered him an opportunity to compete for the U.S., although Hamida was hesitant to leave his family. His feeling of neglect from the Egyptian community helped influence his decision to embrace this opportunity. Stevens housed, fed, and trained Hamida once he relocated to the U.S. In order to be eligible to compete for the USA, a four-year waiting period was required in which he would not be able to compete for any other country. Hamido utilized this time to train and go back to school. He was grateful for the opportunity to study physical education without being discriminated against. He excelled academically, receiving all A's and eventually going on to earn his master's and PhD. After four years had passed, Hamido earned his U.S. citizenship, but because he hadn't been able to compete officially in so long, he was nervous and worried about his ability to compete on the national level. Coach Stevens reassured him that he had all the ability he needed. All that he had to do now was trust his training and preparation and focus on what he already knew how to do. 
Pamita went on to win the World Championship in weightlifting and make the USA Olympic team. He was also offered the opportunity to compete with the U.S. seeded volleyball team. This opportunity made him the first Paralympic athlete to compete in both an individual and team event. Hamido made the Egyptian and USA national team twice and was the first Paralympic athlete to have competed on two different national teams. After his success in America, Hamido was invited to the White House to meet both President Bush and President Clinton. He was the first Egyptian to receive this opportunity as well. Dr. Amito through uh, him being a professor here at Tennessee State University. I had him my freshman year. Uh, you know, that was my first experiences with him. He's done a lot for me. He's meant a lot to me. Uh, you know, from where he has come from and where he is now, uh, you know, it's truly an inspiration. He really epitomizes the, the, the word warrior. Well, one of the things I was quite impressed with him as a colleague, and we worked out together. He, he loves to um, lift weights. He has a picture when he was weighing about 180 to 185 where he's strapped down on the bench and he's lifting about 580 or more pounds. Very impressive. I met Dr. Amito in 1997 as a student. I went to work out with him one time and uh, we did a few reps and I thought that was it for the bench press and he said alright now we've warmed up let's start working out. And so I only made it one workout with Dr. Romito, uh, but I realized how he got so strong. He, uh, his work ethic was unbelievable. Uh, I have to almost say with a joke that a lot of us have worked out with Dr. Romito, and we try to increase our strength. And so everyone that he's worked out with and I've met with him over the last few years, they've all gotten hurt and injured. <laughs> and they say, well, I used to work out with him, but now I had to go get this fix or that fix. And Dr. Mito is still out lifting very heavy weight, and uh, I think it's a passion of his, something that he's unique at doing, and he just loves it. Uh, so as far as the other games and his classes, he taught us some special education classes. He was teaching, he taught us about uh, seated volleyball, where he had won some medals in that, uh, and some different strength, strength and endurance challenges uh, for students with disabilities, which carried over into my uh, teaching profession to where I use some adaptations for my physical education classes uh, that, that really was enlightening to the students, but also uh, was enlightening as a teacher. Today, Dr. Hamido's teaching philosophy is very hands-on, allowing students to put themselves in the shoes of disabled students. His goal is for each student to not only begin to comprehend how difficult things can be for people with disabilities, but also how it is very possible for them to equally enjoy participating in sports. Dr. Hamido um, is a very fine person. He has very strong convictions. He's a truthful type of, of an individual. And uh, his name has a meaning, and it's, it's giving, it's at peace, and how he's always willing to give. And it seems like that name suits him so well, that he always likes to give. Um, and he doesn't really expect too much in return. 